Okay, so I'm on day three of the advent of code. Um, I solved day one and two using JavaScript and uh, JQ, and I've uh, uploaded those to YouTube. Um, if you want to follow along and maybe learn from what I'm doing or see how I've done it and go your own way. Um, I also managed to somehow solve day one, part one, using uh, Z80 assembly way harder than I expected. Um, way, way harder. And just looking at this, today's problem, no idea how I would solve this using assembly. So I may have to just kind of tinker at that as I go along. But this is day three. So um, day three has a problem where um, I need to count the number of times I hit uh, this hash, which is supposed to represent a tree, as I move um, right through. Uh, it's just down here a little bit. So it's kind of, I'm moving right three and then down one. I'm starting up on the top left-hand corner. I'm going across three and then down one. Do I encounter a tree or a hash um, or pound, depending on your country, apparently? Um, and uh, this pattern uh, repeats for infinity. Um, so they've got an example here. So this is kind of the first position, the second position, and so on. So when it gets to the end of this uh, map, then it hits um, seven. How many trees would you encounter? So this is the first time I'm attempting this problem. I haven't thought about how I would solve it yet. So you're kind of getting this in real time. I've already got the puzzle uh, downloaded in uh, three dot input. Um, and I've also already grabbed the code from oh, yeah, was from the uh, day two, just to kind of feed the file in and uh, just have it to hand. So I'm gonna be using Quokka again, just uh, because it's quick to develop with or to develop a solution to. Um, so I've got res.length. So um, what I'm going to have to do here, I guess is, um, hmm. Probably, I need, uh, there's a few things. Firstly, I need to kind of move through this row by row. And when I get to the end of the rows, I need to count the number of collisions I've had. So I set up a variable to capture collisions. So uh, let collisions equal zero. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to move through uh, this. I guess I'll need to know kind of the width of the string. I'm guessing that all of these are the same length. So I can probably um, work out let, I don't know, uh, width equal null. And then I can just do uh, width equals, let's change this to rows, uh, rows, rows dot bleh, naught dot length. Okay, so the width of my I, tree line is not quite the right word, but tree line is 31 or 32. No, it's 31, I'm guessing. Yeah, 31. Where's my number down here? Column 32. Yeah, 31. Um, <clears throat> and uh, importantly, if I go off the edge over here, I need to make sure I wrap around the pattern. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my position um, I'm going to track my, um, I guess I'm going to walk through each row, track my X position and uh, keep incrementing it by three as I move through each row and I'll apply modulus of the uh, width of the, the data line basically so that I'm always kind of looping back around. So if that kind of makes sense, what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to do a for loop I think. Um, I equals rows dot length. Um, so I've got the individual string. So this is a row. Oops. And uh, I need my pos x position. Uh, x position equals naught because I'm just going to start up on the top left. Um, and what do I do? I go right three and then down one. So I'm going to do um, x plus equals three, and then move to the next. And I guess the point here is that if there were a tree here, I would collide with it. There isn't, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do my test here, right? Um, when I move down each one. Um, so we want to get uh, const object uh, 
const tree equals uh, rows i. And as someone pointed out to me on YouTube, I think it was, uh, where I was splitting, uh, I was doing a split on a string. Actually, you can access a string like an array. That was just my old IE6 days creeping in. Um, X, and then we're going to do percent uh, width. Uh, so that should give me the uh, thing that I'm bumping into or not. Um, actually, I might, I might ditch this input and switch it for the test input. So I've got a little bit less to work with. There you go. Um, so we are expecting to miss. Right, in fact, we can look at this. Uh, where is it? We're going to miss. First one is a miss. Second one is a miss. Third one's a hit. Miss. Hit. So we should see. Uh, let's get rid of this. We don't need that. We should see. Um, oh, undefined. Oh no, not the width. Okay, that's all. Keep. So we should see uh, miss, miss, hit, miss, miss, hit, miss, hit, hit. Okay, cool. Um, and then we're just gonna do. Uh, I guess we could just do this if collision uh, equals a hash, then collisions plus plus, and then we just do constant log collisions. Oops. Oh, if I can spell, I can't spell. I'm just printing that out. Okay, seven collisions, which is uh, this number here. So let's go and grab the puzzle input again. Let's plunk that in there. Save 153. Let's have a look. Hey, cool. That was lucky, maybe. Okay, so part two. Okay, so um, the problem to solve here is can uh, you run the same code but with different trajectories of your toboggan? Um, and there might be a smart way of calculating this uh, as we go, but JavaScript is particularly fast and, and flexible that I can just kind of repeat this five times. So it's not a big deal. Uh, we've got the answer for the previous um, data set, which is this is, I really like uh, this puzzle set because it does give you the answer as you go along for the, uh, the sample set, which is good to test against. Um, so uh, part two, we've got these different um, uh, ways of calculating. So what I need to do is, let's duplicate this into part B. I think I've actually got an empty file for part B already. Um, <clears throat> so most of the logic's gonna be the same. The bit that we're going to refactor out is the number of collisions because we have to get the uh, product of the, um, the collisions. So this is gonna become a uh, function we're gonna call. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, let's stop the clocker, let's start it on this one. And let's call a, fun let's just have a function called uh, tree run. Pop that in there and we return the collisions. And um, this is the number of trees that we're gonna go down. So let's do uh, right, ghc down. Let's put that in object. I prefer to be able to read it. Uh, so this is going to be plus equals down and uh, this is going to be plus equals right. And that looks like it should do the trick. So if we run that code with these five or six Okay, with these um, conditions, so we're going to do um, let collisions equals naught, and then we're going to do collisions plus equals uh, tree run and uh, right one down one. And I'm just going to duplicate that to uh, right three down one, right five, seven, and then one, two. Now this is where I get things wrong. I tend to just do this really quickly. And it turns out my son is exactly the same. He will look at a question, not read it properly, give you a great answer, and then get it wrong because he hasn't checked it, that he hasn't. 
misinterpreted it. So let's double check that I've got this right. Uh, oh, it's not that, is it? Um, that's not quite right. I want to just, what am I doing with product? It doesn't matter if, this is the thing, I, I question my basic maths. So you look at these five, uh, five numbers, yeah. And uh, I kind of go, well, if I multiply those in reverse order, do I get a different result? Multiplication should just work, right? Star equals. Well, clearly not. Oh, because collisions. Ah, you can't do that, can you? Uh, I'll just do that. Oh, not that. So the, the reason I had a zero there is because I was multiplying everything by this first zero, uh, which obviously caused the problem. Okay, um, so write down, uh, write one down one, two, yeah, yeah. Yep, that looks right. Um, and we've got an answer, so 336. Let's try that. No. Ugh. What have I done wrong? Yeah, so I've probably just messed up my maths. Two times seven times four times three. I... Have I done? Maybe I've done this wrong. Let's check that. Oh no, what am I talking about? The input's wrong, isn't it? Silly sod. Yeah, the input was using the test input. Holy shit, that's a huge number. Yes, look at that. That's a big old number. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna dwell on that. I'm just gonna get rid of these bits. Here. Um, I think when I look at this number, I'm thinking about in assembly, since I'm working with an 8-bit assembly language, what that is. And uh, I don't even think that, is that 32-bit? I've got this um, bit calculator here. Um, let's. That's a 32-bit number. That is a, no, it's not. It's a 64-bit number. Oh man, okay, well, you know, it is what it is. Right, so what we've learned here is there's actually, I mean, this is pretty much the same. Basically, the the the, the couple of bits were actually in the substring um, and using modulus. Big fan of modulus, it gets me out of a lot of trouble. Um, so uh, modulus, if you don't, if you're not familiar, um, is it gives you the remainder so if you've got uh instead of doing like if i do five divided by five the remainder is uh the result is one but what if i want the remainder i do percent um and i get zero if i do six i get one uh if I do ten i get zero again uh so it's really really useful for integer uh remainders and it's really good for kind of doing things like um grid plotting and so on so yeah that was that. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and try and do this in uh, JQ next. If you are watching these, then that will be the uh, next video. If you're not, that's cool. See you maybe tomorrow, or maybe I might have to catch up in the week. Thanks for watching.